Well, I'd like to thank the organizers to give me a chance to talk here. Thank you very much. So, <clears throat> this talk is based on a joint work with Hajime Fujita, the next speaker, and Mikoto Futa. So, these are references. And these joint works are concerned with an um, index theory for a Dirac type operator on a possibly non compact Riemannian manifold. So, the purpose of this talk is so <coughs> we give an um, overview of this index theory and its applications to symplectic geometry, especially for Lagrangian vibrations and Hamiltonian torus actions. So the motivation of this <coughs> joint work is as follows. So in the context of geometric quantization <coughs> of Lagrangian vibrations and Hamiltonian torus actions, it is often observed for the following things. So for Lagrangian vibrations case, oh, the Riemann-Roch index, which is the index of spin C Dirac operator is <coughs> often observed and uh, often so coincide with the number of a special fiber, so-called Boazomafeld fibers. So we <coughs> we explain what is Boazomafeld fibers later. Anyway, the left hand side, the Riemann Roch index corresponds to the dimension of the quantum Hilbert space of the spin C quantization. And the right hand side, the number of boson buffet fibers corresponds to the dimension of the quantum Hilbert space of the geometric quantization using real polarization. So this phenomenon su suggests <coughs> this quantization are equivalent, at least in the level of pre-quantization. And for Hamiltonian torus actions case, the equivalent Riemann-Roch index can be sometimes written as the sum of contributions from the lattice points in the moment image. For and example, yes. Danilov's formula concerning the equivalent Riemann-Roch index for a projective toric variety. So one of the motivation is to understand mechanism underlying these phenomena if it exists from the viewpoint of index theory. So, so first, <coughs> I explain the index theory. So setting is as follows. The pair of M and G are possibly non-compact Riemannian manifold. Huh? 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 <laughs> okay. Are <laughs> eh, W. This graded Clifford module bundle. So, by definition, the disgraded Clifford module bundle means so W is a Hamishian vector bundle, and this graded means W is the sum of two Hamishian vector bundles, W0 and W1. And <coughs> W is equipped with a homomorphism. So, which we say C from the tangent, tangent bundle to the endomorphisms of W, which satisfies the following Clifford condition. So, typical example is the following. So, so I, I wrote this in, in the whiteboard. So, let's consider the almost Hamishian manifold. So M is a manifold, G is a Riemannian metric, uh, J is an almost complex structure which is compatible with Riemannian metric. Then, <coughs> so the uh, exterior algebra bundle of cotangent bundle of the part uh, is decomposed as two parts, so degree zero part and degree one part. A degree zero part is an so even part, and a degree one part is an odd part. 
And in this case, for the multiplication is given as follows. So here, so u, u is a tangent vector and w is an element of w. And u01 is a z1 part of u. Okay. So the third input data is B, a subset of M whose complement is compact. And pi, a fiber bundle from V to some manifold U, so which satisfy <coughs> such that a fiber is a torus and pi is a Riemannian submergion with respect to the restriction, restriction of G to V and certain Riemannian metric on U. And fifth and final input data is T fiber. T fiber is a first order formally elephant joint differential operator of degree one, which satisfies the following four conditions. The first, so it contains only derivatives along the fibers of phi. In particular, we can restrict D fiber to each fiber. So <coughs> then, for each base point B, the restriction of D fiber to the fiber at B is a Dirac type operator of the fiber. Here, Dirac type means it principles are. <coughs> it means so. This is a first order formally self adjoint differential operator whose principal symbol is given by the Clifford multiplication of the tangent vector of the fiber. And the third condition is for each base point B, the restriction of D fiber to the fiber at B has trivial kernel. And I this condition is yeah. so, <coughs> the Clifford multiplication of the base direction anti commute with D fiber. So this is somewhat technical condition. But so, <coughs> so input data are following five, five things. So what so from input data, what can we get? So the output, output is as follows. So for this input data, there exists an integer which satisfies the following six properties. So in this integer, so we call local index. The first property is deformation invariance. So the local index is invariant under continuous deformation of the data. The second, so if, uh, so, okay. so we do not assume M is compact, but the complement of V is compact. And element, elements of. The so in particular, if M itself is compact and yes, non zero is M, the in here. So the index is equal to the usual index of a Dirac type operator. The third, so its third property is as follows. So suppose, so our M is something like this written in the whiteboard. So this is our M and V, v is here this part. So, <coughs> so for example, M is something like this, and B is here, and uh, let B prime is an open subset. B prime is an open subset of V. So, in this figure, so this part is B prime. So we assume the complement of B prime is compact, and the fiber bundle pi can be restricted to B prime. Then, then the local index for 
B coincide with the local index for B prime. So this is third property. And the fourth property is excision property. So, so for example, so our manifold M is here. And B is here. And suppose we have an open neighborhood V prime of the complement of B, for example. For example, this red part is M prime, and we assume the fiber bundle can be restricted to M prime, uh, uh, intersection of V and M prime. Then, then the local index for M is equal to the local index of M prime. So this is excision property. And also, the local index satisfies some kind of green formula and product formula. So, so <coughs> let us quite briefly explain the outline of proof. So, <coughs> I do not want to explain the detail of the proof, but anyway, so for a non-negative parameter t, consider the following perturbation of the Dirac type operator. Point is first consider M is cylindrical end case. So in this case, so we can show that the analytic index of dt is well defined sufficiently large t by using certain boundary condition. So important point here is important point here is the, the third condition of D fiber. The kernel of D fiber is trivial. This condition plays an important role here. And for a general case, we define B at the codimension one manifold. Uh, so for a general case, end case, so the form we cut B at the codimension one submanifold, say N, and extend cylindrically so that the, all the data are translation invariant and come down to the cylindrical end case. And of course, we have to check the definition is independent of the choice of cut locus. And anyway, we can do this. So this is the, uh, so quite roughly sketch of proof and definition of local index. Uh, so, so we define the local index to be the analytic index of DT for sufficiently large T. So this is the definition of local index. So before we explain some applications, we have to remark two things. One is, so in the proof of the theory, we use a okay, sorry, uh, Dirac type operator. So this perturbation. So this perturbation can be understood as an finite, infinite dimensional analog of Witten's deformation. So what is Witten deformation? Witten deformation is used for <coughs> uh, used to prove the most inequality in early 80s by Witten. So we <coughs> so our perturbation can be understood as in some sense in infinite analog of usual Witten deformation. And the second remark is more important. So, in our theorem, we assume B has only one fiber band. Then, 
The same level can be modified to the following case, where B is a finite or infinitely many uh, a sum of finite or infinitely many open set BIs, and each BI is equipped with a torus bundle, say, pi i. And the ranks of pi i's can vary according to i. And on so no empty overlap, so these fiber bundles satisfy a certain compatibility condition. So in that case, so we can uh, generalize the theorem to this case. So in fact, so this setting is necessary to formulate and prove a product formula. So anyway, in such case, so, so in such a case will be mentioned later. So <coughs> So when we study torque manifolds, what right, is important is the following question. So which situation provides such input data? So in this talk, I will explain the following two cases provide such input data. The one case is Lagrangian vibrations. The other case is Hamiltonian circular action or Hamiltonian torus actions. So first, I will so briefly explain the Lagrange first case, Lagrangian vibrations case. So let's re briefly recall what is Lagrangian vibration. The setting is as follows. So the pair of m and omega are symplectic manifold. We do not assume m is compact. So then a fiber from M to some manifold B is a Lagrangian vibration if and only if F is a fiber bundle whose fiber is Lagrangian. So typical example is the first projection of the product of Rn cross n-dimensional torus with standard symplectic form. So <coughs> in fact, so locally all Lagrangian vibration looks like this typical example. So precisely by Arnold and Liebel's theorem sets, so any Lagrangian vibration with closed connected fibers is locally modeled on this example. So locally Lagrangian vibration can be seen <coughs> as this example. So next, so I will explain what is was method fiber appeared in the introduction. So let F be a Lagrangian vibration with fiber a torus. So we consider a pre-quantum line bundle on M. So by definition, a pre-quantum line bundle is a Hamishian line bundle with Hamishian connection nabla whose first chunk form is equal to omega. So this is the definition of play quantum line bundle. So if M is equipped with a play quantum line bundle, then the play quantum line uh, restriction, so for each point of V, the restriction of the play quantum line bundle to the fiber at V is a flat line bundle because the first chunk form is equal to omega and fiber is Lagrangian. Then, a fiber uh, of Lagrangian vibration is said to be Boazomaffet if Even. the restriction of the pre-quantum line bundle to the fiber has a non-trivial global parallel section. So this is the definition of Boazomaffet fiber. So for example, let's consider the typical example case, product of Rn cross n-dimensional torus. So as we consider the trivial Hamishian line bundle with the connection of this form, 
then <coughs> the direct computation shows that a fiber at x is plasma mafield if and only if x is lattice point. So, so as can be seen in this example, in general, plasma field fibers appear discreetly. So in this case, so <coughs> our local index theory uh, is as follows. So what is so in this case, what is input data? In this case, so for simplicity, we assume M is closed. Then the input data are data are given as follows. So this graded Clifford uh, Clifford bundle W is the tensor algebra bundle of cotangent bundle of zero one part tensored with L, so something like this. And V to be the complement of Boazoma fed fibers. So <coughs> since Boazoma fed fibers appear discreetly and M is closed, then complement its complement is compact. And pi is given by the restriction of Lagrangian vibration to V. And D fiber, D fiber is given by the family of drum operators of the fiber with coefficients in L. So I do not explain detail, but we can understand, we can identify this family to some <coughs> operators on uh, the restriction of W to B. And important thing is as follows. So, a fiber is not Boazoma felt if and only if all degree cohomology with local coefficients vanish, vanishes. So, because a fiber is a torus. So it is also equivalent that it equivalent to the condition that the drum operator of the fiber with coefficients in L has trivial kernel by Hodge theory. So this is this is an analytic characterization characterization of non Boazoma felt fiber. So then <coughs> as an application of index theory to this case, we can obtain the following formula. So in this case, the riemann rojo index is equal to the number of boson method fibers. So the proof is easy. So in that case, since M is closed, riemann rojo index is nothing but, uh, is equal to the lo our local index. And by excision formula, so our local index is sum of some contributions from Boazoma fed fibers. And by the direct computations of two dimensional cylinder case and using a product formula, we can show that so each contribution is one. So as a result, the Riemann index is equal to the number of Boazoma fed fibers. So next, so <coughs> I will explain the second case, so Hamiltonian circular action case. The setting is as follows. So we consider a Hamiltonian, uh, effective Hamiltonian S1 space for simplicity. And also consider a pre-quantum line bundle on it. And we also assume the circular action lift to the pre-quantum line bundle, which preserves all data. Then, so since S1 action is effective, each orbit is isotropic. So in particular, the restriction of the pre-quantum line bundle to each orbit is a flat line bundle, as is the case of Lagrangian vibration. So in that case, Instead of Boazoma fibers, so 
we introduce the notion of L acyclic orbit. So, um, orbit is L acyclic if and only if the restriction of pre quantum line bundle to the orbit has, uh, does not have non trivial uh, global parallel section. So, this corresponds to non Boazoma field fiber. So, for example, so let's consider a two dimensional cylinder with trivial Hermitian line bundle with connection of this form. And we give the following circular action. So then, the, uh, then it is easy, easy to compute that the orbit at x is L acyclic if and only if x is not an integer. So, L acyclic orbit can be detected by the moment map. So, for our setting, the S1 action lift to the pre quantum line bundle. So, the action of action on the pre quantum line bundle, the moment map is defined by the following constant formula. Then, we can show the following lemma. Let O be an orbit. So, if the orbit is non error cyclic, then uh, the orbit is included in the inverse image of the lattice point. So, in that case, the application of our index theory is as follows. So, in that case, we assume the moment map is proper and the cardinality of the intersection of moment polytope and weight lattice is finite. In this case, the input data are given as follows. So W is same as before. B is a complement of the inverse image of weight lattice. Pi, pi is a um, uh, quotient map of the circular action. And D fiber is same as if before. So namely, this is a family of drum operator of the orbit with coefficients in A. In that case, so an orbit L is L acyclic if and only if the drum operator of the orbit with coefficients in L has trivial kernel. So <coughs> the output is as follows. For these, so these above data, there exists a um, virtual S1 representation which satisfies the properties in main theorem. So in this virtual representation we call equivalent local index. In particular, for each lattice, uh, for each weight, weight in the image of the moment map, let V sub gamma be a sufficiently small S1 invariant neighborhood of the inverse image of gamma so that these are mutually disjoint. Then, we have the following localization formula for the equivalent local index. So what to do next is the computer multiplicity. So for a weight sigma and a virtual representation, U, we denote the multiplicity of the reducible representation of S1 with weight sigma in U by the following formula. Then, <coughs> for each weight vector in the image of the moment map, and another weight which is not equal to gamma, the equivalent local index for a sufficiently small neighborhood of the inverse image of gamma does not contain the irreducible representation of S1 with weight sigma. So, so the next question is, so what about sigma is equal to gamma case? In that case, 
So suppose also that gamma is an uh, gamma is an weight in the moment polytope and which is a regular value of mu, then we can construct a new symplectic manifold with pre-quantum line bundle by the symplectic quotient. Then the multiplicity, its multiplicity is equal to the riemann roho index of the symplectic quotient. So, okay. okay. Here, so assume if m is closed, then we can obtain the uh, <coughs> quantization conjecture for circular action. So finally, so as an advertisement of the next talk, so let us explain quite briefly some generalization. So let's consider a CP2 with so pre-quantum and CP2 and uh, O1 as a pre-quantum line bundle with moment map mu. So in this case, the moment map image is the following polytop. So in this case, we put B1 to be the inverse image of the interior of the moment polytop, and V2 be the inverse image of mu of mu uh, u2 prime. Here, this open set is u2 prime, and these vertices are not included in u2 prime, u2 three prime, u u4 prime. And v2 is the inverse image of u2 prime moment map, and and so on. So, on B1 has a T2 bundle structure by restricting the moment map to B1. But on B2 and B3 and B4, the restriction of the moment map is no more five bundle. But still, we have a following circular actions. So, <coughs> anyway, we have a following circular bundle structure on V2, V3, and V4. And moreover, on non-negative overlap, so these fiber bundles satisfy the following compatibility condition. So this induces the notion of compatible fibration and a cyclic compatible system. And we can generalize our local index theory for compatible acyclic systems, so which will be the topic in the next talk. So I stop here. Thank you very much.